Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your JavaScript tutorial series. This video, we're gonna continue our discussion on debugging. Just got something real quick to share with you guys before we move on to try catch blocks, which we should be talking about in the next video. So we're gonna be talking how you can set a breakpoint for a particular event. Now, before we do this, you gotta check out our sponsor. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? DevMountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real-world applications and get a job in the industry through DevMountain's career-centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, DevMountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. All right, so here's the code we had from the previous video, and this is just some algorithm to calculate factorial. But a lot of times our JavaScript applications are going to be very event-driven. So someone clicks a button, someone drags over something, etc. So we might want to set a breakpoint to basically look at the state of our application when something like that happens. So first thing we're going to do, inside of index.html, we're going to create something. So let's go in the body, and what are we going to create? I don't know. Let's just create a uh, paragraph, and we'll say hello. All right, now let's do a refresh over here. And we got hello. Now, if we want to listen for an event such as a click, we can attach an event listener. So inside of JavaScript, what we can do is something like this. Document.get element by ID. We'll talk about how to give it an ID in just a second. And then what we'll say is on click. All lowercase. All right, so let's give it an ID back in HTML. We can just say ID, give it some name, whatever you want to call it, like so. And we can reference that over here. All right, so we have this property on click, and what we can do is we can assign something to happen, so a function. It's actually easiest just to use an arrow function, so we'll just do that. Let's uh, clean this up a little bit. Let's bring this down to the next line, and let's create an arrow function. And I'm just going to console log, clicked. You can use the normal function if you prefer, it really doesn't matter. And then semicolon at the end, do a refresh. Let's go back to the console when we click this, Look at that, it says clicked. All right, so the event is working correctly. Now let's talk about how to set a breakpoint for that particular event. Inside of sources, we go back to our source code, and then down here we have event listener breakpoints, and we have all of these different events, one of them which is mouse, and in here is click. Now I'm not sure if you have to do refresh or not, but either way, when you click this, it's going to pause. So it realized we had a click event, and look, it stopped at the first line of code that happens when that click happens. So that is how you do event breakpoints and you can see there's all kinds of different events you can do. So you can do mouse over and all kinds of other stuff. Let's do a mouse over just for fun. And what we're going to do is we'll just copy this, paste that, and what we'll do is we'll say on mouse over. And we'll change the console log to mouse over. Now let's do a refresh. And as soon as I hover over hello, look at that, it pauses. If I go around, go up from the bottom, it pauses. So that's pretty cool. So that is your introduction to event listener breakpoints. It's a great thing to do if you're having some issues with an event not working or it's doing the wrong thing or something like that. Hopefully that was helpful. Now let's go into the next video where we're gonna talk about try catch and what are known as exceptions. So it should be pretty fun. I'll see you guys then and be sure to subscribe.